laptop. I really have not learned how to use it that well, but I pecked on it today. <laughs> Amen. But listen to what I'm saying. In my notes, everything that was already said is in my notes. Wow. See if you've got to catch that. Luke 8.18. <laughs> Jesus says, take here how you hear or incline your ear. <laughs> Listen, listen, therefore take heed how you hear. We're in a season that, and even in a moment like right here tonight, where everything that has been said, the spirit of the Lord is saying, take heed for what you've heard. The time of, of trying to, The time of trying to go back to a season that is gone mm -hmm. yeah, it won't. It's no, it won't yeah it won't work we're in a new season listen to this and this is I'm just going to read some of my notes so that you can remember what while it's fresh in your spirit all what from the prophecy to the admonishment to the to the word it says it is not enough just to sit and listen but to be fully attentive when the word is being released for instruction. This is what we just heard. These were instructions. When we talk about strategies, when we talk about what God wants, how he wants to go about it. Many times we've, we've been in, a, in our house like ours where there's so much prophetic utterance goes on that sometimes it can just be commonplace. And we can hear so much depth that we'll go, okay, well, that was good. That tickled my fancy or whatever. He says, we have to recognize the season we are in. We are at war. Right. Then I wrote, or did you not know that? <laughs> we are the army of God, and we have been called into battle and to fight for what is right. You know, in this last month's, We've heard from all the different things that's gone on around the country. We've heard a lot of things about what matters. Amen. That has now become a phrase throughout the country in the world. What matters? This matters or that matters. But every Christian's life matters. Every Christian's life matters. See, there's an enemy that has a plan to do whatever he can do to stop the purposes of God not to be fulfilled. Amen. He is not slow. And he recognizes, he recognizes the flow and the movement of what's going on in the houses of God. It's really so detailed that the average Christian might not be aware that many times we are being tracked. See, that can kind of go over your head. Because we don't speak on those things. We don't speak on the intricacies, the very detail of what war is all about. If you're at war with someone, or if you have an issue with someone, guess what you're going to do? You're going to want to know what the opponent is doing, how he's working, what he knows. Is he prepared? One of the great things that I remember, I loved, I, I loved uh, when was it uh, General Schwarzkopf, to me, I wish I could have spent time with a man like that. Why? Because he understood strategies and he had been put in that position because it was his season. What happens is we've got to recognize the season that we're in. We've got to recognize that this is not a time to pull back. In all my notes, I mean, I've got things that, that I'm saying that, that's been said already that's got my heart just pumping. And I was just enjoying it that, Lord, thank you so much. Because I wasn't going to speak on anything about war or the strategies of war. I was going to speak on about our foundation. That's what I told Dr. Bob. But we're in a time that the war is so intense. And guess one of the things that I spoke that I put in here is that one of the great things that the enemy is doing is wanting us to be distracted. She was saying it in another way, but it's the distraction. A distraction becomes what? A diversion. And when you're diverted, when your eyes are not focused, when you're not really fully understanding 
what you need to be focused on, then you're not a threat or you're not even prepared to fight in the way that you should fight. No true soldier, man or woman, goes into war unprepared. Oh. No one goes. Here's a scripture. Put up Psalms 144.1. Blessed be the Lord, my rock. <laughs> Blessed be the Lord, my rock. When we try, see, we get certain things like when we talk about warfare, when we talk about how do we operate in warfare, we've always got to remember who we're underneath. <laughs> General Schwarzkopf, remember the one war, it was called shock and awe. They had, I was telling Mariah that they had what they called sorties. That was every flight. That's when the stealth bombers came out and they were fixed with that certain coating and they could come underneath the radar. They were undetected. And guess what happened? They hit the enemy before the enemy knew what hit them. Shock and all. Boom, done, it's over. So in the church, we've got to learn to, to learn the strategies of how to pray. All in my notes is about declarations, about using the word of God, being skillful, knowing how to wield, wield the, the word of God with great accuracy. What happens is, is that sometimes we, we're here and we're hearing the word, we're hearing the information, and then it doesn't go any further than the door. We go home and we, we go back into like a, a comfort zone is that some kind of way it'll work its way out. But it won't be through me. Do you know that every Christian matters? In the movie, Black Hawk Down was one, another one of my favorite movies. Guess what? Guess what that mission was? No man left behind. Do you know how deep that movie goes? It shows that even in, even in the helicopter, there were men that were, some were already dead, but they weren't going to leave their brother behind. Why? Because they did not want the enemy to take their brothers out of that helicopter, raise them up on a pole or something, beat them and mutilate them to say that this is their spoil of war. This thing is huge. Even in the midst of all this, okay, so here, here it is. Here it is what I, I wrote. A thing that prevents someone from, full, from giving their full attention to something, a diversion. It can keep our focus off of what the Lord has called you and me to do. We need to ask ourselves, what are the things that have our full attention? You know, I'm going to tell you something. And we can, we can laugh at a lot of stuff, but it's really not funny. Do you know even on our phones... There's so many different apps with games and all kind of different things that those, those tools have now become a tool of the enemy. I asked a friend of mine one day, I said, I believe that you probably can't have any fingerprints on your index finger. Because I've seen you scroll on this thing for about the last two hours. And I said, but yet when you say that you don't understand what's going on in your life and you are not in the word and you are not in prayer and that thing has your full attention, which you're not gaining anything, it's not benefiting you anything, it's causing you to live in a world of carnality in the flesh. In other words, that's where the enemy wants the church. He wants us to be like people of old that you see depicted in movies where they're sitting on the front porch and they're rocking back and forth and talking about how it could have been or, or how it was back in the day while he's pillaging and ravaging all through nations and all through cities and different things. He's wanting us to be so focused on how we look at someone's wearing their pants and not understanding what's in their heart. What has them bound? See, those are the distractions. 
Those are the things that has us hyper-focused and not lasered in <laughs> by the Holy Spirit. <laughs> it's a time to prepare for war. The enemy is just banking that we'll only be conversationless with no action. Over in, in First Chronicle 18, here's something, and we know that, you know, I mean, if, if I throw a couple little things here, don't think I'm being in the flesh or nothing like that, because I'm not, you know. But here's the deal. David was a bad man at war. He was, a, he was serious. This guy was a warrior. He was serious in war. Look, look at what it says. After it came to pass that David attacked the Philistines, subdued them. David attacked the Philistines and subdued them. How did David attack the Philistines and how was he able to subdue them? I mean, that's, that's a question. How was he able to do that? Exactly, because he had the presence of God upon his life. If you go through here, I'm not going to take the time to read all that, but you'll, you'll see all the different things and all the different wars and the things that how he defeated, how he continued to defeat, and how he would use even the things that the enemy, what we see the enemy doing today, we see the enemy with his hooks in young men and women, having them so caught up and having them so uh, distracted and going away opposite ways from the, from the body of Christ or the things of God. Why? Because we've not done what is necessary for what we're called to do. And that's to go and reach them. I mean, I don't know. Am I the only one that thinks that? Or? <laughs> And here's, here's another little note that a little nugget that I put in here. Have you ever taken a step back and looked at and thought about what your spiritual walk looks like to the enemy? These are just questions, but they're serious things because what happens is, is that we have a, we have an enemy that I'm telling you is paying attention to the houses of God. He's paying attention to the people. There are people that sit in pews every day, every week for years, and they think that their life does not matter. They believe they have bought a lie that it's someone else that will be used in a way and that they're just there. See, these aren't some over-the-top things that's going to make people go, let me shout and jump. But if you really think about it, we've seen it. You see it, you see it daily. That there are people who aren't using and operating in their gifting. They're, they don't understand that they, their, their life matters to the church and to the body of Christ. And that they can be an effective warrior. David had men. David had men that were trained. They understood their role. They understood their part. Amen? I don't feel like I'm alone up here. I feel like I really sense the presence of God in a very strong way. You know what I mean? I mean, I really do. Because God, God wants to get something, get something across here. It's the same thing I just said. The enemy sees us unprepared, unprepared, not knowing how to be engaged in the fight. Not knowing what our weapons are that defeat him. In Ephesians 6.13, can you put that up, sis? Therefore, we know this one. Some of you probably can say it backwards. Therefore, take up the whole armor. It's not taking up part of the armor, but taking up the whole armor, Pastor Pam, the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. We are in the evil day. And, and so here's the deal. If we're not taking up the whole armor, 
if we don't even know how to, to, to put it on correctly. You can't take the breastplate and put it on your feet. <laughs> you, somebody might want to take the belt of truth and wrap it around as a headband, but that's not where it goes. Each one of those has a specific role. God is a God of great design. Everything that he's done has great purpose. Can you put that back up, please? And having done all. Now, see, there's the thing, like Dr. Bob said a few weeks ago, he said, when you read the word, don't just rush through the word. He said, read it slow. Why? Because you'll miss that right there. He says, he says having done all. What does that mean? That means that you, you're going through a process. You're not rushing through to try to get just your armor on. You're understanding how each piece fits in the purpose and the design for each piece. So you're having done all, preparing yourself in all to stand. To stand. Some said we came in here today. There's times I've come in here. I've been weary. But I know that my help comes from if I'll press through. I know this is where my strength comes from. When you come into the corporate setting. When you come into the corporate setting. Guess what? That's what was going on in the movie. It's like we, we've got to come, come alongside one another. You know what I mean? And if you need help in an area, we need to help one another. See, there's no new messages. There's no new messages that are going to come and cause someone to go, oh, I've never heard that, so now I can operate in that. No, we're, we're going back to the basics. Jesus Christ and him crucified. Amen. We have to. We've got to go back and check our armor and see. I always think, that, do, do you ever polish your armor? Do you ever take the time to just, you know? Polish your breastplate, you know what I mean, and see see the see how fit and beautiful it is. I thought, man, my goodness, if your if your breastplate is polished just right and your shield is polished just right, that ought to be enough for deterrent for the devil once he sees the glory of God in your intentionality of taking care of what you've been given. Stewardship. I had some some times in my life that that I had some real encounters with darkness. I mean, and so it's kind of like it's like what Pastor Pam was saying that if we come into the houses of God and we think that we have this thing with the Father that we cut him on and off whenever we want because that's who we are. We're walking in ignorance. We really are walking in ignorance, doctor, because God is wanting us to be intentional in understanding our purpose. The power of prayer is so deep. It is so deep. On Tuesday mornings, on Tuesday mornings in our prayer time with the men, I'm telling you, I've seen and witnessed with my own eyes the glory of God come because of the unity what's happening between men, between the brothers. It is no small thing. Every, every prayer time is not like the last one. And we thank, you know, the sisters and the mothers that you're praying. I mean, we, we're very grateful for that. But we're seeing the glory of God come and we're hearing the, the, the things of the Lord being released in that moment of hour, hour and a half, whatever it is. You know, we've seen a lot of injustice and going on. But we're the ones, we are the ones, the body of Christ, we are the ones that need to sound the alarm. We are the ones, we are the true trumpeters. We are the ones that, we are the ones that, that have the, the ability to change, to change the atmosphere, to change the climate of a nation, a country. We have that. It's kind of like one time when I thought about giving. If someone thinks this person over here is really well to do and they are not, 
they might take upon themselves thinking, I don't have to really give to the degree of what God wants me to do because that person over there is well to do. We'll let them take up that level of slack. It's the same way in the realm of the spirit. Sometimes that there are people thinking, I don't really have or know what to do. That's why these times are important for us to be in the houses of God so that we can have that fresh impartation and grow and be a mature men and women of God. God is calling us to be mature. He's not immature. Paul said, when I was a child, I acted like a child. But when I came up a man, I put away childish things. What is he talking about? He's talking about a mindset. If it's not, we, we don't have time to play around any longer. Every day that we're not advancing, every day that we're not walking and operating in our purpose, we are allowing the enemy to gain more and more ground. I thought it was so unique that Pastor Pam, when she starts speaking and releasing what she was saying, that's, that's the part of the, of the enemy strategy is that we would be misdirected. We would not have the understanding. What is the Spirit of God saying today? How do I go home? What, what areas of my life do I need to address? I was looking at this, I thought, in the book of James, James 5, 16, it talks about confessing our faults. Addressing those areas in our life. There could be things that are going on in our life that are blocking or stopping our relationship and growth with the Lord. Yes. Look what it says. Confess your trespasses. What could be some of our trespasses? Some of our trespasses could be because we're just downright lazy. Come on. We could be a word that we don't hear too much. We could be slothful. <laughs> That's a tongue twist. Slothful. Confess your trespasses. This is where the Catholics got it right. One to another. We, you, you know, you don't even have to get in the booth. You know what I mean? You, could, you know what I mean? You don't have to knock on the little door. You know what I mean? And just, you just, hey, wait a minute. They got that part right. Go back with that. Confess your faults. When is the last time that you ever said, and I need to. Now, women, you all have it right most of the time. You will go and talk to another sister. But if you get some of these muscle-bound brothers, I guarantee you what, it's like you got to have an orthodontist, you got to have a, you got to have diamond drill bits and everything, C4, <laughs> because, because brothers are going to be like, no, I'm, I'm good, I'm good. You know how many times that I sit there and I should have been going to another brother saying, you know what, man, man, I'm just having a rough time right now. Could you could you agree with me? Could you just stand with me and, and at this time? I, I, I really need someone that pride. That pride is a is a wicked tool. It's, it's wicked. We have all the outer appearance going on and our spiritual and our heart is fragmented. It's totally, totally broken up. But we keep the we keep the beautiful Nice little facade going on that I'm okay. You know it's okay to say I'm hurting. That's where I was for weeks. I was hurting. There's some other scriptures. I left my I left my notebook, but I'm just looking at I'm looking at overall that you know that the word of God is the only thing that's going to hold us in this day and age, in this day and time. It's the only thing. It's a part of the strategy. It's a part of the, it's a part of the great power and authority is learning how to speak the word of God in these cer certain times that were uncertain times for those that don't know Christ. But also it's an exciting time too that we could be a part of watch the great victory I'm looking forward to that. Pastor Pam said that there's like certain strategies I was putting in here. Uh, we need every soldier to be, at, be uh, their best and well trained for this end time fight. Even as it was spoken the other day about the importance of declaring the word. Declaring the word of God over the situations that confront us as a body, as a country that is under attack. 
we need to put aside every weight or things that would, would hinder us in our position in Christ. You know, I was talking to Dr. Bob for a little bit the other day, and I was, it's, you know, you can think this is off the, off the trail, but it's not. I was even thinking about most of us, sometimes we, we don't even get in shape with, in our bodies. You know, we don't, we don't get our physical. And I know the scripture talks about physical exercise and all that profit, profits doesn't profit that much, and, but it does. We need, to, we, need to be in sh- we need to be in shape, too. If God, this COVID's over with and the Lord starts releasing people to other countries and whatever and, and you're out of shape and you're carrying an extra 30 or 40 pounds, how are you going to go up the mountain to release the word? You know what I mean? They'll say, well, there's Brother Mark down there at the, at the end. Just get a rope and pull him up, drag him up. <laughs> Get one of those, get one of those pachyderms, or get one of those, uh, drag him up the mountain. He's, he's falling and can't get up. <laughs> but it's true. <laughs> he fell. He fell, he fell in battle. He fell in the heat of the battle. No, he fell from the heat. Now he was just, he from heat exhaustion. It wasn't because oh, Jesus. I'm sorry. I I just saw that, but anyway, I believe the spirit of the Lord here tonight was so beautiful. You know, you you. You, you have these like there's times like, you know, I'm typing these things out. I got all these different notes, but I'm sitting there looking. I'm looking at everybody and I'm going, do we really get this war that we in? This thing is intense. There are children. We don't even touch too much about the abortion, about the level of the abortion that still is going on because COVID has still overshadowed all types of things. And we don't even think about all the babies that are still being killed. Daily, yes. Tens and tens of thousands. But we've, got, we've been so distracted by the COVID and the television that we don't even think about that. That's something that's been touching my heart lately about the little babies that don't have a voice, but we have a voice. Let's stand. I mean, wait a minute, wait a minute. Dr. Bob, do you wanna? Yeah, Yeah, okay.